This video shows how integer overflow attacks exploit source code and can take advantage from it. This is a view of a cache register application. This is a view of the cache register.java class. This application first asks the customer to enter the item number and quantity. When the customer is done with the purchases, his or her items will be checked out. The application then calculates the total bill and charges the customer by the total amount of purchase and deposits the amount into the store's account. A handling or manipulation error of item number or quantity can break the entire system. In the first case, integer underflow. What the programmer of this code has not anticipated is the possibility that the customer balance will exceed the minimum possible integer value. In this program execution, we can see that the customer's balance has reached the minimum value of integer. In this execution, we can see that if the customer buys just one more item, the customer's balance wraps around to a positive value. The second case is integer overflow. What the programmer of this code has not anticipated is the possibility that store balance will exceed the maximum possible integer value. In this program execution, we can see that the store's balance has reached the maximum value of the integer. In this execution, we can see that if the customer buys just one more item, the store's balance wraps around to a negative value. In the third case, other than integer overflow or underflow, the attack on the unverified integer input buffer can cause a denial of service. For instance, if the user enters a value of string type into the item number or quantity, the application would crash and throw an input mismatch exception. Now, how do we reverse engineer the integer overflow attack? First, we look at the misuse case view of the cache register application. The view presents extensions and exceptions to the main success scenario, which are potential attack vectors. From this view, we can see what developers intended users to do and what hackers can actually do with the system. When accessing the cache register application, a regular user intends to purchase and make a payment based on the total cost. A hacker also intends to make a purchase. However, the only difference is that the attacker does not want to pay the money. Even worse, a hacker wants to add some money to his or her account balance. This activity is indicated by red lines. The attacker has another option to misuse the application. He or she can also harm the store by making the store's account balance negative. Now we explore our process view. This view contains additional information about the flow of control during the interaction and can show specific locations within a sequence of method calls where the system can be exploited. In a case of a regular user accessing the application, a program execution starts when a user accesses the application. The program then calls main.java that displays a console to the user. The system utilizes nextint method in the scanner class to take the user input for item ID and quantity. The application then charges the user based on the total of items that the user enters. This is the exact location where the vulnerability happens. When a hacker comes in, he or she can enter a big integer value that can make the balance value wrap around so that the hacker gains some money while purchasing some items. In another case, the attacker pays the money for his or her purchases and makes the store's balance negative at the same time. 